Well, color me shocked. I actually enjoyed it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we are talking about Lightyear. Um, I don't even know where to start with this because this one, more so, I'm a couple days late on this. I saw this movie, I'm filming this on Friday. I saw this movie two days ago on Wednesday where I also saw The Black Phone and Jurassic World Dominion, but I had also watched uh, Jurassic World and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And the day prior, I had watched the original three Jurassic Parks and the four Despicable Me movies. I have not seen the newest Minion yet. Anyway, all that is to say, I've been watching a lot of movies in the last few days and I've gone to see three of them in the theater so far and I'll get to the other three that I want to see which are Minions and Thor and Top Gun uh, within the next week or so but this one I feel like other than what I've heard of Top Gun which is just about its success not much about the movie itself I feel like this one is the movie that I heard the most about um, and not that I went and sought out what other people were thinking of it. It's just that I watch a lot of movie people on YouTube and I listen to a lot of podcasts and I had decided that I wasn't going to avoid them. Um, you know, whereas with something like Thor, like I gotta go see that right away cause I don't want to get spoiled or anything, but I had already kind of heard that people were disappointed with Lightyear. So I was like, all right, I won't avoid these podcasts and these YouTube videos. I'm not seeking stuff out, but if something pops up that, you know, that's part of what they're talking about, not necessarily the whole thing, I'll go ahead and watch it. So my expectations for this for this were pretty low. And I've said before on this channel that lots of times if something has low word of mouth and everyone's talking about how bad it is, lots of times I will enjoy it more than the normal person does. And if it's got a lot of uh, good word of mouth. I usually won't enjoy it. So I'm kind of nervous about Top Gun, but I didn't really care for the first one. So it's not like that's going to be a big deal if I don't like it as much, but that's not always true. And to prove that, look at my videos on the Black Phone and Jurassic World. The Black Phone is getting pretty good word of mouth. I enjoyed it quite a bit. And Jurassic World Dominion is getting pretty bad word of mouth. And I thought it was crap. So it's not that I'm 100% a contrarian, that I always go for the opposite of what most people say. It's just that word of mouth can adjust my expectations, and my expectations can determine how I feel about a movie. So, Black Phone was pretty good, so my high expectations were not let down. Jurassic World was pretty bad, so my low expectations were not out of place but this movie word of mouth is pretty bad my expectations was pretty low but I enjoyed it quite a bit of the three movies I saw on Wednesday I enjoyed this one the most and this is the one that I saw last so after watching three Jurassic World movies and the black phone all in one day end of the day it's late I'm tired my stomach is sore from eating popcorn from the first two movies. And I wasn't expecting this to be good. All the pieces were in place for me to not enjoy this experience. But I enjoyed this movie better than those other two. Is it the most amazing movie ever? No. And are there problems with the movie? Yes. But one of the biggest issues that I'm hearing people talk about is that this movie says in the opening title card... I guess it's not a title card. The opening text card. This movie says that this is the movie that Andy saw that made him want to get a Buzz Lightyear. And I'm seeing so many people and articles and headlines and whatnot talking about there's no way that's true. And I don't understand where they're coming from. Right? And so I, I kind of want to break that down a little bit. I think, first of all, people are being too way, way too anecdotal with it. Right? They're saying, well, my son didn't want a Buzz Lightyear toy after watching this movie, so it's ridiculous to think that Andy would. Different kids latch on to different things. Right? Just because your son or your brother or a kid that you know didn't want a toy doesn't mean that a fictional character in a different universe might want the toy. Right? 
So to give two counter examples to that anecdote, I'll give my own anecdote. Number one, I bought this figure right here in preparation of this movie, just in the hype of this movie before all the bad talk started, right? And I bought several others from the different Toy Story series. I've got Woody, I've got Rex, I've got the Potato Heads, I've got the little alien, I've got an Etch-a-Sketch, I got Slinky Dog, I got the little army guys, I got the Barrel of Monkeys, I have probably a dozen or so toys from the Toy Story series that I did not start buying until I saw trailers for this movie. So even though I've seen all the Toy Story movies, I've enjoyed all the Toy Story movies for whatever reason, maybe it's just because I'm an adult and I have money to spend now, but that was true with Toy Story 4. But for whatever reason, the trailers for this movie... Is, and this is before I knew the concept of this is the movie that Andy saw and wanted to buy. To, like It's not like I was trying to play into the meta of it. I just was hyped for the movie and I went and I bought the toy. Example number two, my biggest thought coming out of this movie is I want to buy a stuffed socks plush. Right? I want to buy another toy from this movie. Now that's not the bus toy, but that's because in my mind this is the superior bus toy. Right? To go and get an action figure from this movie because I live in the real world where we have the Toy Story movies and this is, to me, the superior figure. No, I don't want to go get one of those Buzz Lightyear figures. But those are this to Andy. Right? So people are taking this fictional child from this fictional universe back in 1995. That's the other thing is that nowadays kids have so many toys to choose from. From so many movies and so many TV shows that they have access to instantly on their phone or their iPad or their PlayStation or their Xbox or their TV or whatever. So it's a lot harder for something to grab a kid's attention now. But back in 1995, even our 1995, not even considering that this is a fictional universe as 1995, anything that a kid saw, they're going to want a toy for. That's how kids are. Right? So, if that's the one concept that has to come through in this movie, that this is the movie that Andy saw that made him want to buzz light ear, I have absolutely no issue buying into that. And the people that are, I, I'm not with you. I'm sorry. And it's fine. We can disagree. But I think those, you're, those people, I think, are looking at it with too much of a focus on, A, the real world, B, living in the year 2022 and not 1995. And C, the fact that we have the Toy Story movies in our universe that Andy didn't have in his universe. So aside from all that, aside from the concept that it's the movie that Andy watched that made him want to buy a Buzz Lightyear, I think it's a pretty fine movie. Again, I don't think it's amazing at all. I really like the, the Hawthorne characters, um, Taika Waititi's character itself, I wasn't a huge, huge fan of, but the entire gag with the pen and the payoff with that at the end was, I thought, a really, really funny joke. Um, a couple, there were a couple other humorous through lines, um, that I can't think of right now, um, but a couple different payoffs, I guess. Maybe they weren't all jokes, but a couple different payoffs that I appreciated. Um, you know, the whole Zerg of it all. Not, uh, not something that I thought was necessarily necessary, but based on what they showed us and didn't show us and told us and didn't tell us, there are possibilities and there are opportunities for different things to happen. Um, so I'm not holding that against the movie too much. But uh, I thought the character of Buzz was interesting and compelling enough. Like I said, to me, it was more about his relationship with um, the Hawthorns and with the life on that planet. And I've heard a lot of people talking about why did they put him only on one planet, right? Why didn't he go around to different different planets and interact with different species and I haven't seen the Buzz Lightyear of Star Command movie or television show, but isn't that what that was? And even if not, isn't that what Star Wars is? And Star Trek? And, you know, I just don't understand why people are upset that it's not yet another copy 
of something that we've already got multiple versions of. The point of the story, the crux of the story, the whole concept of Buzz wanting the mission to come first and I need to finish my mission and the mission is to get us home and the resolution of that is, spoiler alert, oh, this is home now, right? This, this is our home now. You guys have all lived your entire lives here. I'm the odd one out. That doesn't work if you're playing and hopping. Maybe you could do a couple at the beginning, but it, then it's, why is it even in there if that's not what the movie's about, right? That, that has to be the core of the movie for that character arc to work the way that it does. So I don't have a problem at all with the fact that it's all on one planet. But more so than anything else, this movie works because Socks is amazing. And I know, I know it's simple. It's just another baby Yoda, right? It's just another cute thing with big eyes that they put in front of us and we all drool all over. But if it ain't broke, keep selling the merchandise, right? Um, and I got, I got kind of upset because I went online to buy a socks plush. And the one that I saw that I liked the most isn't available to buy until like September. I want it now. I want to squish it. Anyway, I enjoyed this movie quite a bit. Again, not amazing. It's not like I'm going to tell people, oh, you have to go see the movie. But if you've been avoiding it because of what other people are saying, I think it's worth checking out. For me, I, I had to go see it before I saw the other three because it's not playing in my theater anymore. I was checking the showtimes for this week, and when the new movies started on Thursday, Lightyear is out of my theater now even though it just came out a couple weeks ago. So I had to go see it on Wednesday before some of the ones that I thought I wanted to see more, like Minions or Top Gun. I had to make sure I got Lightyear in before it was gone. I don't know how long it's going to be until it's on Disney+. Plus. And I think that's a big issue with why it's not doing so great at the box office, is that Disney has put so many Pixar movies straight to Disney+, Plus that that seems to be the expectation now. And when they go and they try to change that back around now, We've already got the bad guys that has been in theaters the last month or so that did pretty well because people are taking their kids to see that. And now, right now, we've got minions in theaters, right? So it's like Disney has set up this expectation that the Pixar movies are just going to be free on Disney+. Plus. And then they, the time they choose to take that away and so say, oh, no, you have to pay money for us, they put it up against two additional uh pieces of competition at the movie theater now the bad guys you know is not a established ip so i get that maybe they didn't think that much would come from that but minions is a huge ip right now and i would say minions are more resonant with kids with children nowadays than the toy story movies are because the last two toy story movies weren't made for kids <laughs> they were made for people my age um so, if you've been avoiding it, I think it's worth a watch. Um, and if you just want to wait until it's on Disney+, Plus, then watch it when it's on Disney+. Plus. But I certainly enjoyed it more than I thought I would. And before too long, there will be a socks plush in this household. So, those are my thoughts on Lightyear. Feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm just stupid and I'm being fooled by a cat? Very possible. Let me know what you think down below. But that's everything I've got to say. Thank you for watching and have a good day.